guys and girls, and welcome to the new channel, uh, Rove's Reports. Uh, it's been a long time coming, to be honest with you. It's always been in the back of my mind to do something like this, um, especially with the Instagram doing really well. I mean, it was only last year that I, I really started off with the Instagram. Um, and since then, it's just took off from there. We're on every social media platform now because of this, uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and now finally YouTube. Uh, I just want to thank you all um, for for everything, really, you know, 2.7K 2. on um on the Instagram at the minute. Absolutely flying. So, um yeah, welcome to the channel, everyone. Uh, just thought I'd leave this little message here before we get into the video. Just a quick thank you to Sam and Dom. Um, You know, Sam for the intro, Dom for the graphics, and all, all around helping out with this type of stuff as well. So thank you to them, guys. And, yeah, we're going to be joined by Alfie and Phelan soon. And, you know, I hope you guys enjoy and this can be a frequent thing. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. <laughs> what a <day. laughs> bit delayed. Here we go. Oh, Joe Ryan, Joe Kim, Ryan Costello. Kim Costello. Hello and welcome to the Rose Reports YouTube channel. This is our first video here. We're joined by two guests. Uh, first one being Alfie. Say hi, Alfie. Hello. <laughs> and we're also joined here by Phelan as well. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to be running through uh, a few things today. So first of all, we're going to talk about the Huddersfield game. You know, <clears throat> a game of two halves, quite literally. The first half, absolutely shocking. And then the second half being one of the best halves of football we've played all year. And the two people that went to the game, Phelan and Alfie. Alfie's been to 13 away games this year. He wanted to get that in there. You know, what? what what's your thoughts on the game uh, against Huddersfield, Phelan? I thought against Huddersfield, I thought in the first half... Um... Defensively poor. We couldn't keep the ball. It was sloppy. Um, we got overrun in midfield and there was just nothing about us going forward. I thought, in the second half, completely different game. I thought, Morton, we've seen something we've not seen from him in since the first half of the season. You know, it was good going forward. He could play the ball about. thought Carter, it was good playing out wide. I thought, well, the obvious one's Joe Rankin Costello. I mean, it was absolutely out of this world. The best I've seen a Blackburn player play all this season. Seven shots on target in one game, says it all. And for a right back, and that's just ridiculous. Um, I thought, second half, Miles better. I think the only player I don't think contributed as much as he could have done and should have done was Ben Brereton Diaz. But I think we've seen that for a while now. Um, but other than that, it was a great performance and we're unlucky to only come away with one point. Yeah, like, like like you said, the Joe Rankin Costello, seven shots on target. There was only one team in the EFL that actually <coughs> eight more shots on target, being Blackburn uh, on Easter Monday. So a good start for him. And like you said, as well, Brereton Diaz, ever since it's confirmed he's going to Villarreal, his head's always been in Spain, really, hasn't it? But uh, what about you, Alfie? What was your thoughts on the on the Huddersfield game? Costello was easily one of our best players that day, I thought. To be honest, since, since roughly Christmas, he's been one of those stand-up performers this season for us, but that first half was it was it was atrocious. Right. I've seen a lot of first halves of football, but that was easily up there with one of the worst. But second half, you could tell you could tell what John had said to them's works. He came out as a completely different team. I mean, Morton playing balls in like he well, like he had been doing at the start of the season, to be fair to him, but recent games he's been dropping form a bit. But I think I think everyone were well to be fair. I think can't really the only faults we can have are the two sloppy goals we conceded. Well, other than that, I think a pretty solid performance all round. <laughs> Something we need to work on, I suppose, coming up to Hull on Saturday. Yeah, and like you said there, Morton had a really good second half, didn't he? I mean, first half, arguably, he, he could have been at fault for both goals, really. I mean, the, the little slight touch that uh, sent Purs a bit wayward with the first goal. And then the second goal, uh, obviously, give the ball away. But um, it was positive to see... Uh, a lot of fans might be frustrated with the fact that we didn't come away with three points instead of one. But, you know, we can't complain, especially with the first half performance. But coming up to this weekend anyway, Saturday, uh, Sky Sports Rovers in full full swing. Uh, we've got Hull City, 7.45, Ewood. Um, Alfie, I'm going to come to you straight away with this one. Uh, what do you think we need to improve on, you know, when it comes to the game this weekend? I think, I don't really think there's much to improve on, to be fair. I think we are pretty solid against Huddersfield. It's just try and, you know, play play it from the back a bit less. I thought that was the only negative from the game. Every time they got the ball and they could have started an attack, they always seemed to go back. Specifically, I mean, Travis and Carter, I'd say, were the worst for it. But you can't fault them, to be fair. I think they've been pretty solid all season. So I'd say that's all we, 
all we need to work on try and cut that out a bit and I think we should be alright yeah and Phelan what do you think yeah so as you can see here Phelan's um, internet didn't do him any favours so we're just going to replace this with this much better I think the one thing we're really missing from Huddersfield is the impact from Bradley Dak who can create something from nothing who can find that split open pass and just open the game up completely when there's no options there there's nothing to create um, I think without him we struggle but then I think at the same time Tyler Morton can produce that sometimes I mean we saw it with the first goal where he, he, he split it to JRC um, you know he can find that pass out of nowhere sometimes and we just don't seem to have that I think against Hull we need to maybe not play so forward because then when everyone's uh, in the final third they just can't seem to open it up and I think if you come back a bit and then we can maybe counter more, but it it all it all depends on well does that really, and hope he can come back as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, like like you said, the creativity has been um, a thing that we need more of recently, especially in the clear cut chances. I think obviously in the second half, I think it was something ridiculous, like twenty odd twenty odd shots. Uh, I think it really something we didn't touch on there, but something we really need to work on is the clinical nature of the team. I think we we need that number nine up front. I think that you know Gallagher, you know people talk about his win success whilst on the pitch. I think it's something ridiculous, like eighty seven percent of the games that he plays, we've won this season. I think. It's quite lucky due to some of the games he's played. I feel like some of the harder games that we've had, he's missed this season. And that's one reason why he's got such a high percentage on the win success rate. Um, but I feel like maybe moving Barrett and Diaz into more of a central role or something like that, you know, like we saw against saw against Huddersfield, as much as his head isn't in it, I think uh, it's something we just need to do for the rest of the season. Then come summer, have a look at that. We're talking about positions and changes that we need to do. Coming to, coming to this Saturday against Hull, we're not going to go on the whole team prediction. I think there's obviously some solid, uh, solitary uh, positions there with Carter, Hyam. They're never gonna, they're never gonna swap position. Uh, they're never gonna get subbed out, especially with their performances this year. You know, JRC is definitely a starter. Um, but one, one position in particular that people have been arguing about online for us is the the goalkeeper position. Uh, you know, I'll start start with you, uh, Alpha here again. Who would you start in that? Would you go for Pers or would you go back for the Belgian cat Kaminsky? Well. Uh, I think Purs the only the only negatives he's had this season really were um, the two goals at Huddersfield. But other than that, I think he's been he's been a great backup for Kaminsky whilst he's been out. But I think we I think we have to bring Kaminsky back in just because of how many times he saved us earlier on the season before he picked up the injury. So I think for me we have to go back to him. But credit to Purs for what he's done for us whilst Kaminsky's been out. Yeah, and what about you, Phelan? Um, I think. <clears throat> Kaminsky, when it comes to shot stopping, you know, he makes some saves which you'd not expect any keeper of any level to, put, to to produce. I mean, it's ridiculous some of the saves he makes. But at the same time, I think with his feet, I think Pears is just twice what Kaminsky does. I mean, he seems more composed, he seems calmer, and his distribution just seems so much better than Kaminsky. So it all comes down to what Jan wants, really, but... I personally have to stick with uh, with with Bears and I keep coming to get out for a bit. Yeah, and just a couple more positions that I'm going to touch upon. You know, Joe Joe Rankin Costello's place in this in the team is definitely it's a must now on the starting the starting team sheet. I mean, especially after the performance he put in against Huddersfield. <coughs> but one thing I'd like to know from you boys really is, you know, just one word for this one: J R C midfield or defence. With you, Phil, and what what would you say, right back or centre mid? It's a sense I mean, when you're lacking creativity going forward and you're out having seven shots on target in one game, you can't keep him in defence. You've got to, got to play in midfield. And also, when you've got backup being Callum Britton, who's arguably on his day one of the best right backs in the league, and you can't, you can't keep a player like that on the bench, you can't do it. You've got to bring them both in. And I'd say push JRC up into midfield. Yeah, and what about you, Alfie? Uh, I agree with Phelan, to be fair. You can't really. Keep it. <laughs> it fell off. It's all right. It's all right. I I agree with failure. You can't really keep a player with that much quality as Britain has on the bench for as long. But I also don't think any of the three midfielders in Wharton, Travis, and uh, and Morton is out dropping after after Monday. To be honest, so I feel like maybe start JRC right back and then 
if need be, swap him to midfield for either Morton or Travis or Walton, obviously, and stick Britain at right back and just see if it helps us or not, and then go from there, I'd say. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, like you said, and something that I saw online before by Elliot Jackson, um, he mentioned about how JRC playing at right back allows him to have so much more freedom without being picked up by these midfielders. Because, you know, when you're playing in that midfield three, you're getting picked up by the other the opposite team's midfielders all the time. So maybe with JRC moving into midfield, maybe it could, you know, mean he's getting marked more and he can't make the runs that he is making. So it's quite, it is a tricky one. Um, but another last position that we're going to focus on is striker. It's one that's up in the <coughs> end. Should Diaz play a strike? Should Dolan play a strike? You know, should Harry Leonard get his chance in the in the starting eleven now? Should Sam Gallagher now he's fully fit be back in there? What 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 do you guys think about that? You know, I'm going to start with you, uh, Phil, and who would you be starting at strike for this game? Um, it's a tough one. I mean, when you got to play that Sam Gallagher in the middle, who's six foot five, he'll win headers. But when he's not playing striker, when he's not being played as an out and out striker, he's being played all over the place. Really, it's is not a player. If you put him in the middle, I think he'll score, but it's not where he's being played. And then it comes to Diaz. He's not, he's, like you said, his head's not here. He's, his head's out in Spain. And I don't know, he's not putting the performances in a while now. And then you got to go to, is Harry Leonard ready? I mean, we, we saw 25 minutes, so was it against Huddersfield? And I thought he looked amazing, to be honest. He looks like a really good player. Complete, um, quick. He could take the ball. But then you've also got Dolan. But I think the the issue we've had is we've got players like Dolan and Thomas who can put a ball in the box. And how many times we've seen it where no one's there. And then that's where you want a player like Diaz or Gallagher to get in the middle. But it's not how we play. So if we want to keep it with the how we play, then it's got to be Dolan or Smodix or one of them in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like we said before, it's a tricky one. Um, Al, what about your take on it all? Uh, I, I, I don't really think Brereton is a, like you know much of a striker for us. Really, I feel like his performances are a lot better when he's coming like in from the wing. But I also don't think we should start Dolan in the middle because he's just he's lacking the height and the physicality of a player like Gallagher and Brereton. So, I, I'd say. Probably Dolan and Schmodix keep on the wings or just behind a striker. And then for Saturday, I, I think we have to start Harry Leonard, really. Just like just how energetic he looked when he came on Monday. But then again, like Phelan said, it's down to, you know, is he ready or not? But I suppose we'll never know if we don't give him that first team chance, let him start. Can't do any worse. So I think yeah. you just gotta just gotta give him a go. Yeah, yeah, and like like you said, though, when when Leonard did come on uh, against Huddersfield, I mean, it was it was mouthy, weren't he? He was very lippy to uh, the defenders. He liked giving it out to the the defenders, the ref. You know, he looks like he'd been playing in the first team. You know, with uh with what he was doing on the pitch. But um, you know, what we're all a lot of people are here for anyway is the predictions. Who do you think's gonna score? What's the score gonna be? And I'm start off with you, Alfie. You know, well, what do you think the game's gonna be? Uh. Like, it's, it's going to be a tough game, I think. I know past past years, it's been it's not always been the easiest easiest result at Hull. But I'm, I'm fairly confident this weekend. If the lineup's right, I think the scoreline will uh, will match it. So I'll say I'll say two no Rovers. Nice, nice, nice. And what about you, Phelan? With the way we are at the moment, it's so hard to predict. It could literally be a thrashing, and we absolutely batter them. Oh, the other way around, you know, it's it's hard to predict with us. However, I'm feeling after that, I think it's going to be a massive confidence boost coming back from 2 0 down. Which, you know, we when was the last time we came back from being down to get any points? You know, we don't do it. I think it's going to be some big confidence boost to then go and take on and push forward to really fight for the playoff places, which I think I think we're very capable of. I mean, all season, we've well, second half of the season, we've been one of the better teams in the league. So I do think we can push on. And really fight for that playoff place, and so I'm thinking against Hull, I'm going to go, I'm going to go two 0 Blackburn Rovers. Yeah, and I think one thing that we didn't really pick up on is um, Hull's goal scoring threat has been absolutely zero. Especially, I mean, Connor, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Aaron Aaron Connell is out, and also uh, Oscar Estepan uh, is out for the game as well. So uh, you know, two two 
absolute threats to go right there out of the game completely. That's that's two key players who pull coming against the playoff side who, you know, if just if made this massive comeback against Huddersfield, they're, they're ready for this game. They're, they're going to be lacking goals. So I, I can't see us losing, but it's going to be one of them. Can we score? You know, and for me personally, I think I, I think we'll nick one. I think it'll be one of the youngsters. I think it'll be Wharton or if Leonard does get a game, I think he'll score a goal. I think it's going to go one nil really. But yeah, I think I think that sums it up for the video, really. I think that's it. Um, I just want to thank Phelan and Alfie for joining for the first time here. Cheers, Phelan. Yep, no worries. Thank you very much, Alfie. Yeah, no worries. And yeah, you know, you'll you'll probably be seeing more of these boys. Um, you know, they go out to the away games when I can't. I'm down here at uni. Uh, you'll be seeing them on some vlogs. Um, they might send me about 50 videos over because it's hard to keep a serious face for these boys. But you know, that's what it's all about. That's the enjoyment of football, and we love it. But yeah. Thank you for those who have watched this first episode, you know, hopefully we can upload a lot more regularly, get some daily videos out, but thank you very much and everyone take care.